some things that the word of God is going to come out. Bless you today for your faithfulness to be in the house of God. Amen. Right? There's nothing better than your faithfulness. Those of you joining by our media church, welcome into the sanctuary today. We welcome you. We could not be what we are without you media people. That's a fact. Why? We get calls, we get texts, we get this from people all over the country, really, uh, about watching and that they are blessed. And we are thankful that we are, can be a part of that. And we welcome you every week into this sanctuary knowing that, you know what, we're all a part of God's family. Oh, yeah. And that's what we should be doing together. This bunch is some of the best in all of Cincinnati. And I'm thankful to be here tonight, today. And I know that this place will make you feel at home if you're ever in this area. Stop yeah. by and be with us. Man. We'd love to have you. But I know that God has an on-time word for his people here today. You agree with that? Amen. All right, now here's what I want to do. Let us begin to go into the Word of God. Let's go to the best selling book of all time. Amen. The Word of God. Amen. I'll be taking today's text from Revelation chapter 3, the first six verses of that, verse 1 through 6. Then we're going to jump over to John chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 60 and go through 69. If you are able, stand to your feet for the reading of the word of God. And this is what the Spirit says to this church. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, right. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. And if you were on the revelation thing, you'll know what that's talking about. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. Oh my Lord, what did Jesus just say? He said, you look alive, but you're dead. That's basically what he's saying. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. There's my text right there. That are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. And hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. Thou hast had a few names, even in Sardis. What's that mean? That means there's a few names that I've known you by. There's a few people I've known that are still not standing. They're not standing with you anymore, right? There's a few names there in this church which have not defiled their garments and they walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Amen. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Amen. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Amen. John chapter 6. 60 through 69. I'm going to read this real quick. You read with me. Now listen. I know this is longer than I normally read, but guess what? Remain standing for the word. You can sit down all day long when I'm done. If you want to, we'll get a chair and wheel you out of here if you need it. All right? Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they have heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? There are some things that come from the word of God that you can't hardly take with your ears. Yeah. Right? There are some messages that come across that we can't even bear to hear it. But it's good for our lives. It's good for our soul. Amen. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, guess what he said? Does this offend you? Mm. Mm. That's a direct question. Mm -hmm. What and if shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except what were given unto him of my father. Mm. From that time of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What's that saying? They turned their back and left. Mm. They, didn't, they did this to Jesus. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Hmm. This is going to get good. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Strengthen the remnants. Heavenly Father, bless us as we give this word that you, we believe have given to this people. Father, help us to receive this word from you and let it change our lives forever. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. We are bombarded on every corner, especially this time of year. Commercials, radio commercials, <coughs> mailers, everything like that with the hustle and bustle of the times of this season. Because the world itself has taken its uh, vision and its focus off of the real meaning of this time of year. And they have commercialized it to receive a profit. They have taken something from the truth to make it what they want it to be. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. A lot of that going on today, don't you think? Yeah. But here's what I think. Mm, this is good stuff. I don't need a commercialized or a departmentalized or a monetarized experience here today. What I need is the truth, I need the hopefulness, and I need everything that God has given to us today because he is posing this same question to this body, to this church, will ye also go away? Are you easily moved from what you believe? Are you easily moved by distractions? Are you easily moved by people's mouth that runs like diarrhea? Are you easily moved by what you see versus, and what you feel versus by what you know to be truth and righteousness? He's posing the same question to this body here today. And we better have an answer for it. What should our answer be here, G, I don't know anything better than what you got. Why? Because you are the bread of life. You are the fountain of living water. You are truth and righteousness to my soul. And you have the words of eternal life. If that you, clap your hands and shout yes in the house of God. But that out of all these distractions, guess what? It's not Gucci, baby. It's not. It's not. It's remnants. It's remnants. What are you talking about? It's not Louis Vuitton. No, it's remnants. It's not even Nike. It's remnants. It's remnants. It's something that this. Let me pose it this way. She be your mom or whoever. She took something that almost was forgotten and made something out of it. Understand it? She valued it. Just like the woman that came to Jesus with her oil of alabaster and wiped his feet with her hair. It may not have been much to everybody else there, but it was everything to her. Why? It was a remnant. Because it was the best of what she had to offer. And she said, Lord, I don't have riches. I don't have accolades. I don't have the best that money can buy. But I'm bringing you everything I am. And I'm bringing it to your feet. It's a remnant. It's what holds value to me is what I'm bringing to you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Right? Hallelujah. What are you talking about? She would make shirts for, for me, blouses for my sister. Right? Yes. A few trousers for my other brother. All from discounted remnants. Think about that. 
So today we go to the remnant table. I think we should. How many's ever went to the uh, the store and they have a remnant section? Yes. You can buy clothes. You can buy carpet. You can buy all these things. Rent. But you know what? I found out I got a carpet at my house that is a remnant right now. You don't. <laughs> you don't always have to go for what's alluring to the eye to what will work best. Amen. Right? You can go get a carpet, Lisa, and you know what? You could pay $11,000, dollars 13000 3000 $5,000 for this carpet for your living room floor. But then you can also go to the remnant table, and guess what? You can get one of them area throw rugs for 60 bucks that makes your room spark and show. Amen. Right? Why? Why? Today we go to the remnant table, and we're going to stitch these two texts together. What are you talking about? They're different as wool from the satin or burlap. They are different. And they, but guess what? There are two texts that seem like they don't have anything to do with one another. And yet it's my responsibility to give you today to measure them and stitch them and sew them. And intertwine them together. What in the world does the St. John text where Jesus is talking about, unless you eat my blood and drink my flesh, right? Uh, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you'll have no part with me. Well, what does that have to do? What in the world does that have to do with the apocalyptic text of Revelation? Writing to the church of Sardis, where he says, I strengthen the things that remain. Mm. They are both remnant messages on the table of the copper and his son. You understand that? So we should not today discount what can be done with the fabric of the theological table and the text bypassed by scholars and theologians and ignored by the contemporary tailors of mainstream gospel theology today. Why? Because we ought to see the creativity that can be done from God himself. Amen. You understand? Amen. Though it may seem strange to you today, this morning, I'm going to talk to you about remnants. It should not be strange. It should be known. It's, unforget it's unfortunate, though, that only certain texts are preached about this in contemporary mainstream society. A lot of things are watered down to appease. A lot of things ain't said because it will offend. But didn't he just pose that question? Yeah. Will it offend you? Mm -hmm. Did what I say offend you? I have a, from time to time, I can do that very easily. I offend people very easily. I know I do. Because I'm not a sugar-coated person. If you, if you want to know what I think or you want to know what I got to say, ask me. I'll tell you. Right? Well, and it offends some people. If you don't want to be offended, don't ask. If you don't want the truth, don't ask. Don't ask a question that you are not prepared for the answer. Amen. Right? Amen. But the truth of the matter is this. The word remnant is mentioned 540 times in the Bible. And yet you hardly ever hear anybody talking about remnants. This would be a difficult message to preach. It's going to be a hard message to preach because I'm preaching against the trends of the culture and against what people are like and what really sets them in the good mood. It's going to go against the grain. You understand? I'm preaching against the trends of today, what we're living in. What are you talking about? Who is racing on the Audubon of theology to be fast, to be furious, to be first, to be fervishly? No, that's not what it is. We need to let it soak into our soul and let it saturate us. Why? If you're pursuing all that you're pursuing, what is next? You will always find at the expense of losing what's left. If you're in the fast lane, Always searching for the next best. You will lose what's left. So today I'm going to swim against the current. And I'm going to go against the grain and probably get on somebody's nerves. Whose only focus is uh, the innovative, tiltillating, inspiring, uh, the trends, what's new, what's fresh. No. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty. If from the streets, if you're from the streets, any street people in here? 
Rob raised his hand. Woo! Yeah, to Williger raised his hand. Brian raised his hand. Big boy back there raised his hand. <laughs> what are you talking about? If you're from the streets, I'm fresh. Because I got something new for you. Because you're used to that. You don't know anything about remnants. I'm not here to talk to you for the next and improved anything. I'm not going to give you a speech or something to sell you anything. No, I simply want to know if you will grab my hand like I grabbed my mother's hand and will take a serious look at why God mentions this word 540 times in the Bible and mostly in reference to prophetic fulfillment. Why is God in love with remnants? Why? Let's start with the text in Revelations. Are you with me? Say yeah. Yes. Now, I love y'all. I love everybody here. There is no place I'd rather preach in the world than Greenbush Baptist Church. Why? Because uh, uh. use my people. <laughs> right? Amen. This is my church. Right? Amen. This, is, this is my world. This is what I live for. <coughs> right? This is what I wake up for. This is my purpose in life is to do my best for you. Right? And the book of Revelations is penned by John, but it's authored by Jesus. And you must understand the book is divided into three categories, and it divides itself when it explains itself by saying, John, the writing, the things for style, has seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. So when John writes about seeing Jesus with his hair like, like wool, his feet like brass, that they've been burned and hewn in the fire, he's writing about what he has seen, right? When he writes to the churches, he's writing about the things which are. And when God says, come up hither, I will show thee the things which shall be hereafter. This is the syllabus from which Revelations is written. And guess what? It is the masterpiece because it is Jesus responding to the question that the disciples asked him. When should be the signs of thy coming? And what shall be the end of the age? He said, it is not given to the Son to know, but to the Father which is in heaven. Because he had not yet been to the cross. You understand? Yes. But the book of Revelations is him riding back over the balconies of heaven down to John to answer the question himself. Though John himself is a remnant, John is a remnant because all the other apostles are now gone. Think about that. And John is all that's left. And Jesus is talking to a remnant about a remnant. Mmm, that's good stuff. I wonder how many of you are the only ones left still standing. Hmm? I was asked this question the other day about some people that they get up, they leave, they don't, they don't hang around, they don't, you know, how, how many know churches is, are an open door, they're a revolving door, let's just say that because it is true. People pop up, they get up, every time they get offended, every time their nose runs, every time they get a cold, every time I say something that they may not like, they get up, they try to go find somewhere else to go that'll make them feel better or feel good about themselves, right? It's a way of life, it's been that way from the, you just read it, <laughs> right? It's going to happen, right? But Jesus is saying, where are you going to leave too? Right? And here's my thing. I was asked a question the other day about some people leaving the church and this, that, and the other. Here's my answer to that, and I guess I'll say it this way. Here's what i got to say. We cannot worry about who stays, who comes, who goes, who does anything like that, because the question's been posed, will ye go away also? Are you going to walk away, or are you going to stand firm? Which one are you going to do? The choice is yours. Nobody can make that choice for you. You have to make it. Amen. Right? And I was asked that the other day about some time. Uh, I was in a conversation about the, the business meeting that's coming up and some things I've got to address and some things i got to say and address with certain people that's come, that's gone, and all that stuff. It's coming. You'll get to that around December mm, uh, 10th, whatever that may be. Right? 
So we'll do that later. But then I was asked this question. What do you think, Pastor, when this happens? What do you think when you look out and you don't see what you see from week to week? When you, how can you go from 70 and 80 to 40 or whatever? Here's my response to it. This is what I believe. And it goes with answering this question. I would rather have 40 people who can answer that question honestly from the heart than 70 people who are fake and don't even know what they possess themselves. Give me 40 people that know how to stand up, that know how to pray, that know how to seek the face of God, and that can stand firm when adversity comes. And when the fire comes in to destroy, they can pray all heaven down and say, God, I ain't letting death nor life nor principality nor things present nor things to come there is nothing going to separate me from the love of God there is nothing going to separate me from my purpose if that's you clap your hands and shout yes give me somebody that can answer that question I'm not going anywhere I'm not easily moved just because my nose is running doesn't mean I have to take a week off. Amen. Mm. That's, right. That's right, brother. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Just because my toe hurts or just because somebody hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> grow up. You know, when you grow up into an adult, you're supposed to come into fruition of this thing that you're not so evil. If you had what you said you had, you wouldn't be so easily moved. Amen. 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 That's so true. Come on, let that sink in. Yes, sir. What are you talking about? If you're, mm, this is good. I wonder how many of you are the only ones left still standing with stubborn bodacious faith, tenacity, unrelenting, unwavering, standing by yourself, standing in the integrity of who you are in Christ. Yeah, Even when other friends have gone in other directions, and yes, you have suffered some losses along the way, but you're still here. You're still standing. You see, the text in Revelation 3 is largely a clarion call to strengthen the remnant. Because all that stood around the remnant had really fallen away. They had a reputation that they were alive, but they really were not. They had been so influenced by the culture and the people around them. You ever notice some people stay quiet and they really don't have an issue with too much unless somebody else chirps? You ever see that? I have. I've seen it personally. A lot of people don't have problems with certain things until somebody else opens their mouth and says something. Guess what happens? Then it's a reputation. You were alive, but you're actually dead. Mm. They're influenced. But here's what happens. When that happens, they lose their identity exchange for popularity. They lose their identity for what's popular at the moment. You know anybody like that? Yeah. You ever seen that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're not careful, you can lose your identity seeking popularity and lose sight of who you are trying to fit in with who they want you to be. And the church had lost its way trying to pursue the culture. They had to be relevant to the culture. They were so relevant to the culture that they had lost sight of who they were. That's right? right? Yes. And the book of Revelation says that the only remnant, only a remnant was recognizable. I want to be in the number of people who resist the trends, don't you? I want to resist the fads. I want to resist the winds of fluctuation that come and go. And I want to know who I am so that I don't get caught up in a current of who you want me to be, but everything that he asked me to be. I don't want to lose sight of who God created me to be just to appease you 
or someone else. Right? But I would rather be a few in number and know who I am than to be deluded and polluted by an opinion. Good work, Pastor. Good work. Until I lose all sight and direction myself. Right? That means I'll do what I got to do if I have to do it by myself. If I have to do it, that means you don't have to like me. You don't have to respect me. You don't have to well, want to be around me. But you know what? I'll do what I got to do myself if I've got to do it. Not to lose sight uh, of answering this question from my heart to him. Amen. Right? Amen. You with me? Yes, sir. You don't have to agree with me, but I refuse to let you discard me. Do you understand that? That's what you got to say. You got to stand up because I'm willing to be a remnant even if it's at the expense of not being relevant to you. Amen. You understand? Because God works with remnants. Does he not? He says strengthen the things that remain. This is the clarion call that's being given to Greenbush Baptist here today. Don't look to the past. Uh, don't look even to where you are. And don't even try to look into the future. But what you need to do is let my Holy Ghost woven thread go amongst each fabric of every being in this house. Uh, and you know what? Uh, come what may. The thousand may fall at my left. Uh, Ten thousand may fall at my right. Uh, but it shall not come nigh thee. Why? Let me thread with my Holy Ghost thread and wove between each member. Why? With cords that cannot be broken of a remnant that's being strengthened. What I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the weak from the chaff. I'm going to separate the weak from the strong. I'm going to separate from those that some aren't easily to walk away. Because when the battle gets hot, you want to know why it's always the same ones complaining about being defeated? It's because they don't have the tenacity of fervor to stand when the battle gets hot. Uh, they expect everybody else to do it. But God said, strengthen the remnant uh, and make it known and make it strong and let's get the job done together. You believe that? Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So you might be tired and you might be winded and you might be frustrated. What are you talking about? Hmm, strengthen the things that remain before the influence of others has taken root. There's still a few people in Sardis, this is the church he's talking about, that are yet holding on. Because there are people that will hold on with everything they got. Because you know what? You have to have a mentality that says, I refuse yes. to quit. Yes. Amen. I refuse because your opinion does not do anything for me. But it's my mentality determines whether I sink or swim. Yes, sir. Right? The tolerance of sin had taken its toll. A deadly spiritual cancer known as complacency and unknowingly made its way into the church. And suck the spiritual life right out of it without even a fight. Sad but true. But not the few that were still holding on. Not the remnant. They were holding on. While he rebuked the church as Sardis, he did not rebuke the remnant. Think about that. Instead, he revived it, and the Lord said, I'm going to revive the people who are holding on. Amen. Because God himself is even saying, I can't even revive the ones who don't even care themselves. If you want to be so complacent, so flippant with your identity and with your calling and with your purpose, it's strange to me how some people can say, I'm called to do this, but yet walk away from it so easily Amen. and so flippantly. Amen. 
Right? Amen. But I'm going to revive the people who are holding on. Amen. I'm not going to let go no matter what comes. No matter how hard the wind blows. No matter how dark it gets. No matter how much the pain may sear through my body. I will not let go because I'm holding on to the bitter end. Amen. So you might be tired and you might be winded and you might be frustrated and you might get alienated and you might even be asking God, How long must I endure? But the Bible goes on to say, Jerry, he that endures, that means it doesn't matter how long it takes. Doesn't matter how long I have to endure, because the Bible says, he that endure shall not be hurt by the second death. Mm -hmm. Did you say that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold on. I want to hold on. No matter if this joker does or not, no matter if they do or not, I've got to hold on no matter what it takes. Right? I'm going to revive the remnant who are still holding on in spite of the storms, in spite of the winds. And you know what else he went on to say? I want you to focus not on who left, not on who you lost, not on who walked away. I want you to focus on strengthening that which remains. You with me? Amen. Oh, this is good stuff. This is good for the soul, is it not? Yes, it is. The letter is harsh. It's straightforward, and it's designed and written to the pastor where to focus his energy, right? Not to focus your energy on trying to get back people who walked away. Let them go. Yeah, let them go. Why? Let's say it louder for the people in the back row. Everybody say, let, let it, it go. go. Right. Why? This is a time in your life uh, that you can no longer continue to grieve about who walked away from you, who abandoned you, who forsook you, who left you, who walked away. You've got to stand up and recognize that God doesn't need anything that you lost to bless you. He will always use what you've got left. I'm talking to somebody. I don't even know who I'm talking to. But the Bible said, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Why? This is a challenging time. It's challenging because the vast majority of the church has become a victim of the societal culture. Yet there was a minority that were fighting to refrain from the gravitational pull of ever downward. Oh, thank you, Lord. you don't want to go down because there was always something to pull you down instead of lift you up. It's easy to find something to pull you down. It's harder to find something that elevates you. Amen. Right? That's right the remnant wasn't perfect. No, we are not. They were almost dead, but yet they were holding on. Amen. The power of this sentence, in fact, is what? Almost dead, but not quite. God said, before death can get you, I'm going to strengthen everyone that remains. Before death can invade, before it can capsize, before it can stop, before it ceases to exist, I'm going to elevate you, I'm going to strengthen you, I'm going to propel you, and I'm going to take you to the next rung on the ladder spiritually. Why? Because by my power, by my spirit, I'm going to strengthen the remnant that remains. Whatever's left, whatever's holding on, I'm going to put my Holy Ghost wind into, and you talk about a revival, you ain't seen one yet until the remnant is revived. Now, can I talk to tired folks today? Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you run down? People who are at the end of their rope, people have to you don't even have a fight hardly left. They've had to fight their way through all kinds of hell, storms, and all kinds of tragedies, all kinds of adversities, all kinds of arguments and dismays, just to be who you are and get where you're going. 
I would venture to say, I could probably honestly say, there is somebody in this house right now where it took all you had just to be here right now. You had to make a decision to either lay down and die and quit or at least make one more trip. Make one more shot. But you had to fight all of hell just this morning to be here. Why? I've got good news for you. God is about to strengthen you like never been strengthened before. Amen. Why? Because he says, I'm going to strengthen the remnant. Right? And then let me challenge the thinking people. There are thinking people in here? Yeah, there's thinking people in here because you're always thinking. <laughs> While I'm preaching, I see the little cloud and the light bulb. <laughs> right? Let me challenge the thinking people because the great challenge in our lives is this. How can we be innovative and creative and productive and go forward without losing what we have? Anybody get that? Anybody get that? When you move from one location to the next, and you move from one house to the next, you lose things along the way. Right? Because the next thing's not big enough, or the thing that you're coming from, guess what? You've got to shed some stuff to get to here. Right? Are you with me? Sometimes you become so addicted to what's next that you don't focus on what's now. Amen. And if you walk away from what's now trying to establish what's next, then next will only replace now and you haven't really progressed at all. That's right. That's right. Do you get that? Amen. You in the back? Do you get that? Yep. Amen. And the reason you're so tired is because you're so busy getting to the next and losing now that you're still at home plate waiting to swing for the ball. Right? After all these years, you haven't gained anything because you're just swapping out next with now, now with next, next with now, next with now, now with next. All of a sudden, you've got to strengthen what remains before you can gain what, what's next. That's a witty play on words, but do you get it? Mm -hmm. Right? So we're stuck in between in this text, these two different dilemmas. One is not to try to get back what I lost, and the other one is not to fall in love with where I'm going at the expense of expunging where I'm at. So let me work with this for a minute. I'm going to bring it all down home. Are you ready? Say yes. 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 It's like growing up in a home where the troubled child gets the attention and the good child gets none. Can you relate to that? Hmm. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> then I'm going to know which one's trouble and which one's the other. Some of you, it's not a hard guess. <laughs> All the parents' focus is is trying to get back what they've lost and they don't strengthen what they have. You with me? And if you're not careful, the one who was the good child will start acting up for the attention because you're teaching them that the only way to get your attention is to be bad enough to get it. This is the hidden lesson in the prodigal son. It's not just about the boy going and coming back home. It's about the neglect of the elder brother because the father is so focused on what he had lost than what he neglected what he had. Because it's hard to strengthen what remains because what remains becomes common and normal and ordinary and mundane and so predictable and so dependable that you take it for granted until it dies. Amen. If you're not careful, you will undervalue who stayed trying to get back who left or to get what's next or who's next. Because sometimes there's nothing really sexy about being a remnant. There's not. 
about being dependable, about being stable, about hanging in there, about being by your side. If you're not careful, you will neglect the people that stayed with you for the people who are next to you. But we serve a God who is talking to us in 540 texts that he is interested in the remnants. He's always preserving the remnants and his promise is to the remnants. His prophecy is to the remnants. Over and over and over and over again, Jerry, the Bible tells us the value of people who stick it out and hang in there and take a licking and keep on ticking. And the God has promised that you can only get, come on, I need somebody to shout right here. Bible class, are you ready? If you abide, if you abide, if you abide, abide, abide. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what ye will. I'm not going to give you nothing if you leave. I'm not going to bless you if you sit down. I'm not going to bless you if you quit. But if you abide, I will open up the floodgates of heaven and I'll pour it out upon you. A blessing that you will not even be able to contain or receive. If you will just hold on and abide. Mm. If you see me when I'm taken up, you'll have a double portion of my spirit. But I can't give this to people who are doing one night stands. Did you get it? What are you talking about? Because the anointing falls on people who stay. The anointing falls on people who hold on. The anointing falls on people who endure. The anointing falls on people who are a champion people who are not afraid to stand and fight. Amen. Right? Both texts are a reflection. Let me see. Mm. Both these texts were written by the Apostle John. Both texts have a sinister overtone to them. Yes, they do. Both texts have John reporting the words of Jesus. Both texts are an inflection point. And both texts speak of separation. Both texts have a sense of cynicism. Both texts are connected to a principle that I'm sharing with you here today. The principle is profound and it's provocative. That you need to focus on what you've got left. Not what you have. Amen. The child that stayed, the friend who stuck, the business you got, cannot suffer for the business you're going after because if you make that mistake again, you're only replacing what you lost, which means you are not going to gain anything at all. You with me? Yes, sir. I see a bunch of people staring at me. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you getting this? Yeah. Jerry, is this good preaching? Go ahead, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Here it is. We're all thinking. <laughs> I see the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> the real test of a relationship isn't when it's easy, it's when it's hard. Yes. Yes, sir. The second text is interesting. Can I, I'm going to pick this up for a minute and I'm going to play with these pieces of the garment. The second text is interesting because it's undeniable that Jesus has changed his message from the kingdom of heaven is this and the kingdom of heaven is that and the kingdom of heaven is likened unto this and the scriptures might be fulfilled to your hearing. All those things were platable, they were, and enjoyable to receive and to ingest. But even though the Pharisees and Sadducees resented him, they could not debate against him because he was the word made flesh. Amen. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Does it say that? Yes, sir. He was the word. Yes. He was the promise. Yes. He was the prophecy. He was the prophecy and also the fulfillment. And, it all, and you know what? It's all cool until he broke out and started talking about death. And then they got quiet. Then he brings up this almost cannibalistic statement. If you're going to be my disciple, imagine now if I say, if you're going to be a member of Greenbush Baptist Church, you must eat and drink of my blood and eat my flesh. You can understand why that would be disruptive. Right? 
And you say, what? Jesus started talking about cannibalistic, uh, drink my blood and eat my flesh to the carnal mind, to those, just the fragment of the mind. That's cannibalistic. What are you trying to say? Jesus is actually calling for them to consume him spiritually. Not literally, but when you hear with carnal ears, you draw carnal conclusions. When you hear with carnal ears, you come up with carnal conclusions. And so this was an inflection point to prove, are you a fan or a follower? Woo! Let that one sink in. Are you a fan or are you a follower? <clears throat> Fans, there's people wearing bingo stuff in here today. Let me break this down for you so everybody can understand this. Fan, two years in a row, our home team, the Bengals, make a stellar season. They go to the Super Bowl one year, go to the AFC Championship the next. I say that's a pretty awesome ride, don't you? Now this year... Oh, we're terrible again. We lost our 500 and... 275 million guaranteed. 275 million dollar guaranteed quarterback out for the season. I read the other day, 208 million he's going to get regardless whether he walks on the field again or not. Yep, it's actually 250. Let me ask you, okay, we're back to fan or follower, right? Fan. Cheer. The last two seasons be distraught right now. Turn it off. I ain't going to watch it. We're terrible again. We're going down a road that we've already been on. That's a fan. But a follower. Like Brian right there. Or Rob. Or Big Boy back there. What happens? They got their orange and black on every Sunday, no matter if you win or lose. Because it's my team. It's my hometown team. I'm just not just a fan. I'm a follower. I follow them. I'm going to stand with them in the good. I'm going to stand with them in the bad. If I can holler like a Comanche Indian yesteryear, I'm going to do it this year also. Why? Because I'm going to do what it takes. I'm going to stand and I'm going to pursue and I'm going to chant and I'm going to cheer to push them on. Why? Because they all have a common goal together. This should be the same mantra of the house of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. I'm going to cheer them on no matter what. That's right, brother. I'm going to pray for them no matter what. Yes, sir. Even the Browns. Well, you do now. realize you're in Cincinnati territory, right? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but all of a sudden, what happens? We can't lose sight of that. I'm going to cheer them on no matter what. I'm coming into GBC. Listen, I'm coming into GBC for this purpose. I'm not coming because of you. I'm not coming because of you. I'm not coming because of you. I'm not even coming because of you. Why? I'm coming because of him. I'm not coming to hear the latest soapbox gossip edition. I'm not coming for that. Why? Because I've heard that long enough to where I, I just want to vomit. I want to puke and regurgitate because of so much trash that I've heard said, displayed. It. But no, I need revived. I need a revival. I need a refreshing. And you know what? I read in the Word this morning, I'm a remnant. I'm a part of the bride of Christ. And guess what? When I step into my season, when I step into my spot, he says, I will strengthen the remnant. I may not be everything. I may not hold a posh position, but I must mean something to God because He promised to strengthen me in my lowest point. Alright? Now, let's move on because I've got about 
10 minutes. Not really. I got as long as I want. That's right, bro. As long as the Lord wants. All the fans walked away. And what I got out of this text was that really is amazing is that Jesus didn't chase them. Jesus himself did not chase them. Stop chasing people who are leaving. Stop chasing people who are offended. Stop chasing people who don't get it. Stop chasing. Try to get back in your life, people, that God is trying to take you out of, take out into your life. Jesus simply let them go. He didn't go behind and say, no, you didn't understand what I'm trying to say. You didn't get what I'm actually trying to mean out of, you don't know where I'm coming from. No, 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 no. Let me explain. Don't go, don't go, don't go. He turned to his disciples, the remnant, and he said, will you leave me also? Because what I'm going to invest in is what I've got left, not what I've lost. Amen. It's a good word. That even took me a minute to ingest that. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you get concerned about some things. But you know what? This hit me, even hit me pretty hard. I'm not concerned with what I've lost. I'm concerned with what i got left. Right? But this is good stuff. This is a preach. You see, this, Jesus is bringing them to a place of inflection. And the Lord told me this morning, whoever I'm preaching to in this house here today, you're at an inflection point. You can either become so engrossed in your future that you do not feed your present. Nor so grieved by your past that you're reaching after what has walked away. The word of God to you is to strengthen what remains. Amen. GBC, take a good look around you. God is saying, what I'm holding in the palm of my hand right now, I am going to strengthen that which remains to a place that everybody who mocked, everybody that scoffed, everybody that said it couldn't happen, everybody that said you're crazy, everybody who said, no, it's just not good enough for me. They're the one going to be standing there with their mouth hitting the floor when God walks into the scene and says, my word promised, I'm going to strengthen that which remains and holds on to the bitter end. I'm going to make them I'm a stalwart and I'm going to confound the wise and I'm going to make whole and strengthen that which holds on. Amen. The word of God. Who am I talking to today? Strengthen. That remains. This is not about a monologue or a death or drinking blood or eating flesh. It's much more than that. We've got to turn the page on that and we've got to go to the next chapter. We've got to go to the next level. We've got to understand that what God is trying to do is bigger than that. Yes, sir. Understand? Yes. He's trying to do a methodology. What are you talking about? That creates conflict resolution. Which is the test between opportunistic people and covenant people. Mm -hmm. you me, Jerry, should I repeat that? Sure. All right. He's trying to do a methodology that creates conflict resolution. Get a load of this. Which is a test between opportunistic people and covenant people. Opportunistic people go with what benefits at the moment. And you're also going to see them be the ones who fail the most. They're the ones that you hear crying, something's always happening. That's opera. But covenant people hold on to the promise, not the opportunity. Amen. 
covenant people hold on to something that cannot, will not, ever fail. Amen. Why can I stand so boldly and declare some things sometimes? Because it's a covenant. Because here's the cool thing. You can't come against me. Because if you do, you've got to come against the cross. Right? That's what, it's a covenant. It's signed in blood. Right? If you can't take a lick and a tick, we don't have a covenant in the first place. Because there's going to be an opposition that's going to try to stop you, tear you down, and destroy you if you're a covenant person. No matter what. Right? But if you... Mm. If you can walk away that easily, then you weren't meant to stay. That's right. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Make us, this is my prayer, make GBC, make everybody, everybody, everybody in this room, in this building, a covenant people that says, I'm holding on to the covenant. I'm holding on to the promise. Why? What did, something simplistic, what's he talked about? Don't be, and when we were kids, remember that song, I Shall Not Be Moved? Lisa, you remember that song? Yes. You know the words? tree that's out in the field somewhere it's easier, it's branches are easier to break it can be uprooted easily because they're not strong, right? but you take a tree, we were just recently down in Louisiana and we in the swamp, we in the bayou you know what I'm talking about? you remember where it felt like they were puffing sunshine into where we was because you couldn't even see because there was so much foliage, remember that? I mean I was scared because the only thing that I could see Larry was this I seen two yellow eyeballs out of the water looking at me and it made me nervous. <laughs> right? It's a gator. <laughs> true story. Can I tell a true story? Yes. I usually tell Peggy Chronicles. Today I'm going to tell a Terry Chronicle. Alright? <laughs> Give me something. I don't care. Give me something. Give me this. this All of a sudden, we're in the boat. In the bayou, in the swamp. And how many of you ever watched Swamp People? Amen. Yeah. Or Duck Dynasty. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We out there where you can't even see the water because there's green slimers all over the place. You know what I mean? You're about that high. You're about that high and all you see is two yellow eyeballs, right? <laughs> we go out there. They've got this, what's it called? Some kind of food that they feed the animals, yeah. right? The alligators the raccoons and all them things. So we're out there throwing this stuff out in the water, and all of a sudden, here's the boat, okay? Right here's the boat. I'm sitting on the boat. Terry's sitting right here. I'm facing that way. This gator, I kid you not, 16 foot long. Uh, guess what this gator does? This gator doesn't look at me. This gator doesn't look at the guy. This gator is in love with her. <laughs> he is. I would ask, uh, hey, uh, you going to kiss him? Because <laughs> he swam right up to the boat. Am I telling the truth? He swam right up to the edge of the boat, cocked his rear end down, stuck his nose up in the air, and he wasn't interested in nobody but her. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I talked to her. She ready to, she 
No. I said, Terry, Terry, he likes you. Pet him. <laughs> Terry didn't want to pet him. I said, Terry, look, he's cute. Just pet him. <laughs> so we took this, this uh, symbolic, these little dough ball type things, uh, the protein stuff that they said they were, and you would go like that to these alligators. There were, one we were, there were everywhere at one point. I mean, there were 20 of them swimming around. And I thought, if this boat tips over, I'm going to become the most spiritual person and I'm going to walk on the water. <laughs> I'd be flat footing from the sitting position and that ain't easy. Right? Uh, right. What is all that? Hear us what it was. Was you out of your comfort zone? We don't have alligators in Ohio. No, we We don't have nothing like that here. Down there, they're all over. They run around like cats down there. They're everywhere. Right? She was out of her comfort zone. She didn't even want to throw the little thing something to eat. <laughs> she still has all her digits, right? That tells you how scared she was. She wasn't even going to... Next time, when you see her out somewhere, say, why didn't you pet the pet? Why didn't you pet him? I'm going to get you a pet alligator. <laughs> out of the comfort zone. Right? But yet not fearful enough to scream and say, take me back. She didn't do that. She may have been shaken in her, whatever she's wearing, right? <laughs> Jeans or whatever. She may have been shaken in the moment. But she was there for a, she was there for a purpose. And she was getting exactly what we paid for. Right? Don't you think it's time for us to get exactly what he paid for? Instead of falling down in doubtfulness, fearfulness, and unbelief. And say, uh-uh. I want everything that he paid for because the price was high. And I am not going to buckle, I'm not going to bow, and I'm not going to bend. Amen. But I'm going to stand. Amen. Because he is going to strengthen if I just remain. Amen. Now you're Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father God, Lord, I thank you for this word that you have given today for this people, for this moment, this season. God, the message today is hold on and I will strengthen what remains. Father, keep us the kind of people that you can bless. Help us to take and extract these truths, God. Lord, that we may make the prize, the goal, and heaven our home. Father, I ask that you strengthen each and every one in this house here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Let me ask you something. Did you get something out of that? Amen. Carrie, did you get anything out of that? What, did you get a memory splashback? <laughs> How many is ready to make heaven your home? Amen. 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 Do not forget. Do not forget. I like that. That's the fucking.
Do not forget, next weekend, the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. The 1st will be the Christmas walk in Williamsburg. If you've never done it, it's very enchanting. You'll like it. Lisa, you done it? Yeah. Pretty cool, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, Peggy, you've done it? Pretty cool, ain't it? you done it. I know you've done it. Cass and Lisa's done it. Everybody in the church, you should check it out. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's like from 5 to 8 and... They have a little train thing that you do. You go to all these little stores and you win something. So do that. Uh, trains. Christmas trains, Williamsburg, Christmas walk. That's Friday at 5 in Williamsburg, the whole village of Williamsburg. We will meet at 5 to set up our booth. Around Holtman's. As long as it's around Holtman's, I'm happy. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, you do real. I am a former old dude, right? I mean, it's just cliche us, but oh, holy thou donut. You know what I mean? That's the first. The second is the Derek Loudermilk Band's Christmas thing. they will be here. Make me sick. Yeah. That's it. Ooh. Executive decision. I'm canceling it. <laughs> huh? Six o'clock Saturday. I won't be here. Yeah, I'm boycotting. <laughs> That's Saturday. Sunday. I'll be preaching Sunday morning. Sunday night. What? What? I'll do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sunday night, 6 p.m., the SOS Blacklight team will be here again to do their presentation for Christmas. I usually have them in Easter and Christmas. We have them three times now because of VBS, right? Yeah. But how many enjoy them? Yeah. And here's what you need to do as a church. Invite somebody to be here. Right? Let me expound on that for just two minutes. Can I have two minutes? Do you know through the word of God, Jerry, the word says this. You know how I have offered the Who's Your One program? Remember that? I did it for three years. All it takes is one person to bring one person. That's all it takes. But here's the word. My job is not to build this church. My job is not to, that's your job. The word of God says my job is to feed the sheep so that the sheep reproduce. Yes. That's what the word says. Don't argue with me about it. I did not write it. Right? When somebody asked me, this is going to hit, this is going to hit hard. Somebody asked me not just the other day, not that long ago, Pastor Mike, where's the crowd? Where's the people? I said, it's only going to be as good as the weakest link. That's right, bro. Because it's the people's. Right? It's the people. So let's do our job to do what we're supposed to do. Right? Let's do that. Sun, uh, Friday, busy. Christmas walk. Saturday, DLB. I don't be here. Sunday, SOS Blacklight Team. The Christmas gifts for the children are due back on Wednesday the 6th. What day is the gift exchange? The following Wednesday we will not have service like normal because they will be doing that like we do every year. Going all these, oh, December 9th, Christmas Cave. If you've never done that, I, you should go. It's an experience. We even have a tree. Our church is represented up there in the cave. Our tree, our church, it's up there. Go see it. Support it. It's an experience. How many's been there? Just about everybody in here. Well, go again. Fun night of fellowship. We usually go to eat afterwards at Roosters. No, that was a bad experience last time. <laughs> 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 we usually have a good time, though. Last year was fun. What time are they leaving? 
we got to be at the church at two o'clock on the ninth. If you're going, if you're riding, I'll be driving the van. If you're if you're riding with me, two o'clock, you better be here. Two o'clock, I'm pulling out of the parking lot. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hear that, Ames? Beware of his driving. Everybody, stand on your feet, please. Amen. What? Business meeting December 10th, 5 o'clock. It'll be an hour before church. We'll have service after that, providing you're all in a good mood. If you're not, I'm going to my office and going to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. How many received something from God today? All right. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, we thank you for the word that is given to everybody. Lord, everybody, that if you hold on, I will strengthen what remains. What remains in us, I will strengthen what you thought was depleted. And I will make it unshakable, unbreakable, and a champion. Father, thank you for that promise. Father, be with each and every individual as we leave this house here today. Father, until we meet again in worship in this house or we meet in that great day of the resurrection. Father, we thank you for it. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.